you can avoid your problems all you want but they are not gonna go away i've become so good at avoiding things that like when it comes to the thought of tackling something i get covered in sweat like it's like a tsunami i'm so nervous to just do a little five minute talk in front of five people rather than actually just confront this person and say like i don't want to be friends with you anymore you don't speak nicely to me i don't deserve this i'm gonna move on but no what did i go on to do ignore the person pretend like they don't exist that made it so much worse it made it so much worse because then you can avoid it thinking it's gone away but it hasn't it's just it's tucked away in the corner. You've put it in the cupboard to grow and brew and just get bigger and bigger. I remember the first time I had to do an assembly, but when I came out of it, I, I felt literally absolutely elated. Like just knowing that I could do it. Like I had this fear for ages. Like I'm so scared. Like, sometimes with your fears and stuff and things that you get scared of when you're shy about, like think about it. Like you do actually want this. You do want to start like your own social media account. You do want to start a separate TikTok. You do want to, you do want to be able to do public speaking. You do want to tell this this person that like I don't want you in my life anymore you want these things but the only reason that's the only thing stopping you from getting it is because you're scared the way your self-esteem and self-confidence skyrockets when you face a fear is absolutely insane you can avoid your problems all you want but they are not gonna go away the way I used to be me and my problems would be like this like we would never see each other. I would avoid them like the plague. It doesn't matter if it's like like a thing I need to do at school or college. Like I need to do like this public speaking thing. I need to stand up in front of the class and like give a presentation. Like I, bro, I'm an expert at finding excuses. I would come up with any excuse under the sun to try and not do that thing. It also doesn't matter if it's like a person. Like if there's someone who, I'll get into it. But like if there's if there's someone who like I'm avoiding, like someone who just makes me feel like crap, someone who's like saying things and just making me feel a bit weird, like I will avoid them rather than being like an actual grown up about it and speaking to them, being like, bro, like what's going on? Like what's with all the stuff you're saying? Rather than being a grown up about it, I will just avoid them. I've become so good at avoiding things that like when it comes to the thought of tackling something. I get covered in sweat like it's like a tsunami I'm like dripping like I'm so nervous to just do a little five minute talk in front of five people or I'm so terrified of saying to someone like is there an issue between us because I've avoided stuff for so long I now don't even know how to deal with things out of sight out of mind works to a certain point then it's just out of sight like it's not necessarily out of your mind if that thing comes back up again, you will still become terrified all over again. So I remember back when I was at school and I had to do, I feel like it's normal. You have to do a presentation at some point or another. For some people, it's not a big deal. Like I feel like some people just have the natural confidence to speak up in front of a group of people. For me, the anxious, insecure, mess, terrified little girl that I was, that was like, I mean, you may have well as asked me to like climb Mount Kilimanjaro. I actually would have rather have done that. So basically, I it hit me recently. The more you avoid your problems, the bigger the problem itself will get. If you have a problem which you're able to avoid, that's low key a bit like it's a double edged sword because yes, you get to avoid it and you feel free like, oh, I don't have to do that little talk. I don't have to do that presentation. Yes, you feeling nervous about public speaking. That's like a problem. Genuinely, that will get bigger and bigger and bigger the more you avoid it. It's kind of like, um, all I can compare it to is, you know when you've got a garden and you've got some weeds growing? Like, if you, you can ignore the weeds if you want. Like, it's just a little one. But the more you ignore it, the more that there's other ones that are going to grow. Your garden's going to become a mess. It becomes more of a big blown out challenge. Like, oh my God, you know, for the last three months, I've just avoided these presentations. I've avoided this person. I can't do it. I can't speak to them. I can't stand up in front of everyone. When really, it's the same problem that you had three months ago. It's just even more scary and big now because you've avoided it for so long. Like, I've had people in my life before, and I low-key still do now, so I, I need to work on this. There's been people in my life where, you know those friends that... Okay, yes, you get along with them. Yes, you enjoy their company, but they make little comments that, like, they're making fun of you or they're being horrible. For example, I had this one person that was, like... They, would, they were my friend. They're not my friend anymore. But they would make comments about, like oh my god you're so skinny Christina that's why you've never had a boyfriend you know you look ugly when you take your glasses off ha ha like they would make little little comments here and there that were just horrible 
so basically it got to the point where this person where I was just actually like I don't I, I, I don't like this person I don't even want to be friends with them like I actually would want to cut them off but rather than actually speak up about it I just avoided the person like I fully just ghosted this person which became which was so weird because I was speaking to this person regularly up until then so it was a stark contrast rather than actually just confront this person and say like I don't want to be friends with you anymore. You don't speak nicely to me. I don't deserve this. I'm going to move on. And that could have been fine. But no, what did I go on to do? Ignore the person, pretend like they don't exist, block them and act like they're just going to disappear and be deleted off the face of the planet. That made it so much worse. It made it so much worse because then it was like, an argument and it just turned into like an absolute snowball of a car crash of a situation. What I should have just done was just tackled it head on rather than just avoid anything that I feel like is scary and it's gonna make me nervous. I think when you're an anxious person, like if you're someone with anxiety or if you're someone who like is a bit insecure, it's hard to tackle things head on because you just overthink so much. Like my mind is going a million miles an hour with a little presentation in front of a few people in front of my class like the things I'm thinking of like I need to get this right I need to get that right I need to speak clearly don't speak too quick because you look nervous don't speak too slow otherwise that's a bit weird I want to get a good grade on this thing I want to look good I don't want to look weird I want to wear the right outfit I don't want to wear anything light colors because that'll show my sweat patches like my mind is faster than like a supercar like my mind is just going a million miles an hour overthinking genuinely gets you nowhere like when i used to think about how i used to overthink it's kind of like you're just like riding a bicycle but it's one of those bikes that keeps you stationary like you're riding a bicycle super quick but you're just staying still like you're you're thinking and you're doing a lot and your mind is going so many different directions it doesn't get you anywhere that's overthinking normal thinking or just like making simple decisions that's good and that gets you places but overthinking doesn't do anything because then you're thinking about you're thinking about like not just one situation but what would happen if this then if that happened then what would happen and then what would then you're just thinking about stuff that's not going to happen do you know what i mean that's why it's just a waste what i realized was i was training myself to think like i can predict everything that's going to happen like let me think through all the situations yep this could happen then that then what you know what if it gets cancelled if it doesn't get cancelled then i'll do this if i have to go last what am i going to do if i go first if i'm in the middle you think that you can predict all the situations, but actually you can't. You're not Jesus Christ. You're not like a God that can predict every single thing. And sometimes when you're overthinking, you're giving, your, you're giving yourself this false sense of belief that you can think everything that's gonna happen. You're making yourself think that you have this power, which you actually don't. So it's just, it's all this energy you're putting into one thing, which is kind of just going in, in the wrong direction. Like instead, what I should have been doing with all these things that I was avoiding, like too scared to pluck up the courage to speak to someone or too scared to just do the presentation. All that energy and the overthinking just needs to go in like just facing it head on, like just tackling it, even though you're scared, even though you're nervous, just doing it anyway. Because if you think about it, you know, my fear of public speaking, I had it really bad back then, back in school when I was like 16, 17. I don't really have it now. Like it's not that deep because the only reason why the fear has gone down is because I've just done it a couple times. Like the way your self-esteem and self-confidence skyrockets when you face a fear is absolutely insane. Like, I'm sorry, there's no drug on the market that can give you just the sense of achievement and the high that is when you like do something that you didn't think you could do. Like, I remember the first time I had to do an assembly. Like it was with some of my friends um I, we had to talk about this charity and we were like fundraising for it so we gave like a little speech um and we took turns there was four of us so i had like a little five minute section but when i came out of it i, I felt literally absolutely elated like just knowing that i could do it like i had this fear for ages like i'm so scared like, e even literally like i said earlier like five people speaking in front of five people would have terrified me but the fact that i could do it in front of my whole sixth form and just do an assembly I, I'd literally never felt better in my life. Like I was absolutely on the moon. Is that the phrase, on the moon? I was, anyway. So anytime now I'm faced with a challenge and I'm like, I'm scared, I'm nervous. I just remember that feeling of how insane I felt. Like when literally the feeling you get when you face a fear is just, it's just like nothing else. It's crazy how on the flip side, like before the fear, before you face that challenge, you're terrified, you're so nervous. You're like so scared. And you're like, oh my God, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But then when you do it, you're like, oh my God, I can do it. Like you literally want to do it again. Like, I know I sound like a psychopath, but honestly, it's two opposite ends of the spectrum. Like the way that it goes from one extreme to another is just insane. Do you know what fear is? It's just a feeling. It's just a weird little tummy turn. It's a little butterflies in your stomach. Like that's all it is. It's not actually like 
life-threatening. I think the reason why, I read online somewhere, like the reason why we get these nervous feelings and like the full body shakes and the sweats and stuff is because it's literally a fight or flight response. Like back when we were cavemen, I feel like most people know this, but back when we were cavemen, you know, if we were being chased by a lion, your body would go into fight or flight. Like, so it only happened back then in the caveman days when your life was literally at risk. <laughs> like if a lion's coming, if a lion's coming at you in these days, pff, it's just game over. Like just accept that you've lost. <laughs> I mean, cause there's no way I'm out running a line. I don't know about anyone else. Maybe Usain Bolt would be okay. It only happened back then in life-threatening situations. Whereas now we get these fight or flight feelings, like the full body feeling. There's just anything that scares us. I read because our brain hasn't evolved to like just see the difference. Like we're not in danger when we do um, a little PowerPoint in front of our classmates. It still has that old way of coping with it. So we have to train ourselves now in the new age to just take it head on, tell our brain, like, look, you're doing it. You're doing the PowerPoint. Look, the slides are going in the back and we're surviving. We're okay. You have to teach your brain to see that you can do it and it's not life-threatening. So then the next time you do it, you'll feel so much better and you'll probably feel happy. You'll get that sense of achievement. Like, yeah, you have to train your brain to see that it's not life-threatening and you can do it and survive it, but your body has to like physically do it, if you know what I mean. That's why overthinking won't help because that's a mind thing and you have to physically like do the thing. It's at the point now where I feel quite lucky because I've done so many things now where I would have been scared like I remember for example YouTube like my first ever YouTube video gave me that full body response like I was so nervous to post it I remember I wanted to do YouTube for quite a while before I even started like I didn't tell anyone that I was posting my first video I didn't tell any of my friends that I wanted to post um this was even back when I was like not really that friendly I wasn't like besties with anyone I didn't have that many friends so even I didn't even know who I would have told anyway but I remember I think I told my mum because that's my mum and that's a bit different but I told her about it and yeah I literally just posted it not telling anyone I remember I think I got nine views in the first day or something and I was like woo famous I got I was so nervous for it but you know I gave myself little tactics and hacks to deal with it so I didn't tell any of my friends so then it was like no one's gonna discover this like I didn't promote it on my Instagram I didn't promote it anywhere I just posted it and just like ran away and the second thing was like I did it then like left like if you're nervous or getting super scared or you're avoiding starting like a TikTok you want to start like an Instagram page do you know what I mean like some people want to start an Insta some people want to start like their own social media like their separate account where they can do where you can post what you want to post but people are scared because you're like um what are people gonna say are people gonna judge me people from school are gonna make fun honestly do it and don't tell anyone and then post it and just like drop like leave your phone put your phone in the fridge and just move on with your day like put it in a separate room and just like pretend like it doesn't exist that is what i did i posted my video and then just left my laptop and left the room because there's no point like ruminating on it afterwards like it's done now it's out in the world that's what you wanted like sometimes with your fears and stuff and things that you get scared of when you're shy about like think about it like you do actually want this you do want to start like your own social media account you do want to start a separate tiktok you do want to you do want to be able to do public speaking you do want to tell this person that like i don't want you in my life anymore you want these things but the only reason that's the only thing stopping you from getting it is because you're scared so if you do those little tactics i feel like it will help so much and the thing is as well i mean we've all heard of this before but anything worth having won't come easy if you feel like you're like it is a challenge and if you feel like it's really hard that means you're getting something worth having it, because it's so hard and because you're really challenged right now and because you're feeling like so many emotions that means you're gonna have something really really good and something that not a lot of other people will have if it's easy everyone would do it going back to this person by the way i made the mistake of i mean you could kind of look at it in two ways like i was avoiding the person when i couldn't deal with all their comments like i just avoided the person but then i was also also avoiding the comments like they made these comments over and over again it was regular for months but what happened was like each of these little comments adds up it's not it's you know sometimes it's not a huge thing like they're just making fun of me they're making fun of the fact that i got something wrong like oh you're so stupid don't be like don't be stupid like little comments but what happens anytime you avoid anything, it's gonna just get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you avoid the bins, what's gonna happen? It's just gonna pile up and it's gonna be massive. If you avoid it even further when it's massive, then it's just gonna become a genuinely a mess. I mean, we've all been there. Like, I know this is disgusting, but I remember back when I was living, I was living in London. I remember London gets really hot in the summer. This was like a summer day, like 32 degrees. It was insane. I felt like I was in like Morocco or something. I remember the bins we hadn't taken out. These were the big wheelie bins in the garden. And like 
it was piling up. I remember by the time that we did take them out, not only had the foxes come and overnight, cause we had foxes in our neighborhood in London for some reason, the foxes had like torn them to shreds and like they were scattered all over the street. When we picked up all that and packed it up and put it into the bin bin, like the bin men bin, there were maggots at the bottom of the wheelie bin. Like it was so bad. Like it piled up and piled up and piled up that maggots had grown. So basically, don't avoid, don't avoid anything because anytime you avoid anything, it's just gonna grow and grow and grow to the point where it's just, it's just a mess and it's just disgusting. You have to just tackle these things before they get too unmanageable. Because what happens if you can't even manage it and it's out of control? The more you avoid, the bigger it gets. And if it gets to a point where you can't manage it, then it's just gonna be a bit tough. Anyway, that is another therapy session in the books. Probably need to go speak to a therapist at this point with all the things that I'm on about in my videos, but hey ho, I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Please leave a comment. Let me know which video resonated with you the most and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.